I've been in the construction industry for the past 10 years and I've had a pretty good career thus far. However, if I had known these things that I'm about to go over in this video, I think I definitely could have progressed my career even faster, made things a lot easier on myself, and definitely make those first few years in the industry a lot easier. So we're gonna go into it with number one, you're not always gonna have the best support. Now, what do I mean by this? And I think I'll start with a story. So on my first job ever as an intern, I had a, like an old school superintendent and he showed me the ropes. He even taught me how to use a tape measure, which is a lot harder if you've never used one really before. But he taught me a lot of tricks of the trade. We laid out together and he walked me through all these things. So for example, he sat me down and taught me about doors. What is a right hand door? What does product data look like? How do you look at all the different cut sheets for all the different hardware? So he sat me down and mentored me through that process. And I thought that's how it would be for the rest of my career, but I was very wrong. I went to a different project and not everybody had one, that level of knowledge and two, the time or the care or like that inner self to try to mentor and coach the people around them. And I honestly haven't seen that high level of coaching since I had that first interview. So I guess for me, like my advice for you out there is that if you're feeling that you're not getting the support, like you're not alone. And I would actually frame it in this way of, I believe I got better because I didn't have as much support. Because I didn't have the support, I had to take a lot of things on on my own, do a lot of the learning, take a lot of the due diligence for just myself because I wanted to learn. And I've actually seen this on a bunch of different jobs where it's really nice when the manager sets everything up for the engineer, but at the end of the day, if the engineer is always expecting that to happen on every job, they don't grow. So that's why there's two sides to this, right? It's like good managers, they'll mentor, they'll coach, they'll teach, but hopefully you have enough room in that dynamic to grow and develop your own skills and kind of make your own mistakes because that's a lot of times where a lot of your learning is gonna come from in construction. But I don't want you to feel discouraged and think that you're all alone in this situation where you feel like you're doing a lot on your own or you feel like you're not getting the support you know that's I'm not par for the course but it's part of the process I believe and if you're actually looking for some support for the next week I'm actually opening up some free one-on-one -on -one calls with you guys if you want so if you're interested in that use the link down below to sign up but yes no strings attached I'm purely just trying to meet some of you guys out there in my audience so I can learn more about you and find out how I can better serve you but now let's get into the second one try to find your way Way to manage self-performed work. So what is self-performed work? If you are doing self-performed work, you'll have your own laborers, carpenters, or any scope that you're in, and you want to help be in charge of the process of setting your workers up for success. So in the example of if you're self-performing form work on the project, you would have to make sure that your crew is set up. Do they have all the material? Do they have all the right drawings? Did you do your due diligence to make sure that they're set up for success? And then on the other side of that, you're gonna be tracking their production. So are they getting the amount of square footage they're supposed to be getting on a weekly basis? Is there different ways that you can build and sequence the work to be more productive? And that's why when you're in charge of your workers and you're in charge of that bottom line and you're making an impact to the job with your own workers, that's a totally different ball game than managing a subcontractor. I would argue that you don't get to get that deep building knowledge until you've managed some self-performed work and managed a workforce. So if you have that opportunity on a project, I would take full advantage of that because I truly believe that me doing that early in my career is what really helped me get on that good trajectory. That's why I happened to stumble upon that somewhat by circumstance. But if you have the opportunity to go for it, I highly suggest that you do it. And from what I've seen, if you can nail self-performed work, you I feel like you pretty much nailed the rest of your career. And the reason why is because I think it puts you in the right mindset of how to solve problems. Because you know that it's your own workforce, you're forced to solve the issue, you're forced to dig deep, and you get to see how when you don't set the guys up for success, how that directly affects the bottom line. And when you take that energy into everything else that you do, it just makes you that much more valuable. So the third thing I wish I knew is how much your manager has an effect on your career. And because I, you know, I like to believe that, you know, I have full control of everything that I do. You know, I'm, I'm in control of my own destiny but I really underestimated the amount of impact that a manager can have on the trajectory of your career. So I'll give you a personal example. Like, you know, I was in relatively good graces for a lot of my career 
and I just stumbled upon a job where I had a manager and they weren't as in tune with what I was doing. Like it wasn't as solid of a partnership and I was kind of just doing my own thing because at that point I was already in the business for a little bit. So I didn't feel like I needed to have that interaction with my manager and come to find out later on is that, you know, because I didn't actually have that interaction with them, I wasn't seen in that same high light that I once was when I first started my career. And basically it was because I probably didn't have great communication with that manager. They, they didn't really know what maybe what I was doing. They couldn't understand, you know, if something didn't go right, what the backstory was. So that's why when my career review came up, they told me about how they thought that I didn't get some of my smittles out on time. And in the moment, it kind of caught me off guard because I, again, like I thought everything was fine. And then like I looked back and I realized that like, you know, I got those submittals and I actually worked over Thanksgiving to turn them out in like a couple days. So it's just, again, right? It's like, because I didn't have that strong relationship with those managers, when it came to my review time and later on, it, it actually bumped me down a little bit, you know, in the graces of the other, you know, in the other higher ups, because that's, you know, how they were doing the reporting. That's why, again, I just think you cannot underestimate the importance of that. And I think another thing, Thing that's good to know is that you know it, it that stigma did go away so again as long as you're taking the active steps to understand where you stand with people and making sure you're communicating properly you can actually you know rewrite that ship that's why again i think it would be good if i really realized that early in my career but also if you're maybe in that same position just know that it's not the end of the world as long as you improve your communication skills Try to make sure that you're being intentional about how you communicate with your manager. Make sure that they're, you know, your biggest advocate. You can rewrite the ship, rewrite the story. And that part is really in your hands too. So the fourth thing is the importance of documentation. And when I first started my career in construction, I didn't really believe that it was that necessary. And maybe that was just the naive Hawaii guy in me, but I, I thought that people's word meant something. And a lot of times it's not necessarily intentional. Sometimes it is because people are more willing to save their face than to honor their word. But making sure that you are covering yourself and covering your company is very, very important important these days. I feel like we are living in a highly litigious society. I mean, maybe I'll even get sued for even saying this in a video, but like everybody's trying to find the loopholes, right? So the more paper documentation you have for the reasons of why you're doing something, the better off you'll be. And again, it's just, to me, it's not, that's not normal human nature. Like I don't go to my friends, have a conversation and then follow up with a text message saying like, you know, per our conversation, you know, you're gonna come over, blah, blah, blah right? Like that's just not normal. But in the professional and business world, you want to figure out how you're going to be able to do that. And I think it's not so easy as just doing it, but also doing it in a way that other people don't think that you're not genuine because that can also come off that way too, where people also think that they have an agreement with you and then you just fire off this email and they think, whoa, like, where is this coming from, right? And again, it's just, it's part of the business is, you just gotta find your style of how you do it, but doing the documentation, getting it done and making sure that you have a good paper trail to explain yourself, I think is very, very important. And the tip that I have for this is I usually tell people that I need to document this because my own memory is not very good. And I just wanna make sure we're all on the same page you know, kind of reiterate communication so important. This has nothing to do with like the lack of trust or what have you, right? This is just my own personal way of making sure that I am understanding everything correctly, that we have something to go back to in the time that we all forget. And usually that works and it doesn't rub people the wrong way after I have that conversation. So the fifth thing I wish I knew, and honestly, I did kind of know this, you know, after I did my internship, but I do think that this does catch a lot of people off guard. Um, but that's just the work hours of construction. And it varies from company to company, but I would say in general, you have to work a lot of hours in construction, especially if you want to move up very quickly. And why is that? And for me, I think my own personal belief is that in your 20s is the best time for you to work a lot and invest a lot in your career. Because one, if you do that early and often, if you don't like your career, you'll have enough data to know and be able to pivot early enough. Two, you can build a very, very strong foundation for yourself so that 
maybe later on in life when you have kids and when you have different or better priorities later on you have at least a very solid foundation and maybe you've done you know call it 15 years of work in 10 years or whatever something like that and that'll help you be a lot more efficient at work so you maybe you're not stumbling along the way that much but construction inherently requires a lot of time for you to master anything and the reason being is that not every single job you are doing the same thing you're not always going to be doing mechanical electrical plumbing you're not always going to be doing structure you're not always going to be doing glass or exterior envelope so it takes a lot of time for you to actually understand and learn the different systems or maybe too you're on a bridge project on one job and then the next time you go into buildings those are two totally different things there's some basics that translate for sure but there's a lot of nuance to how things get built looking at sequence schedule that again you're just not going to know unless you do it i mean even within buildings running a renovation project or running a hospital job is much different than you running like a new build tower. So there is a lot of like reinventing the wheel in the industry. You're always learning. And again, I just, for you to get good at all the different aspects, it just is gonna take some time. And the other inherent thing is that you have a workforce that is working during a certain amount of hours during the day. If you're in charge of the workforce, but you still have paperwork afterwards, inherently, you end up doing a lot of that paperwork afterwards. So it just extends your day. And again, I think just going into it with that mindset that you are gonna to have to work a lot more hours and construction, I think just really helps set your expectations properly. And the seventh thing I wish I knew is that your degree, not that it's useless, but your degree doesn't really prepare you for what's out there. And that's the good and bad thing about construction, right? Is that until you do it, you really don't know. You can't understand how things come together unless you see it in real life. The textbooks, your teachers, they can do their best. And I'll be honest, the University of Washington, we had some really good professors. And, and what I really loved about them is that they came from the industry. So they had all these stories, they had all these things, but without being in it, it's very hard for you to visualize it and truly understand what your professors are talking about. And that's why it's not until you really get into the work that you really start to grasp all that information and get it cemented in your brain. And actually that first superintendent that I talked about was one of those guys that really set me straight and told me that, you know, you don't really know anything out here, which was true. And if you go in from college thinking that you know a lot and you have all the tools to start, I think you're going to be very surprised. So again, go into it with an open mind, understand that, you know, just because you have this degree doesn't mean that you know how to build stuff and just know that everyone is on that same playing field. And that's what makes it really great and really not so great because there's so much opportunity for you out there there's a clean slate you can make it whatever you want it to be but then again right you paid all this money for college and you don't exactly have everything that you need to go and excel at your job right off the bat and then the last thing i wish i knew and this may sound silly but maybe I'll explain it and I'll, you know, make more sense later, but just the importance of being a team player. And, you know, you kind of learn this through school, right? When you do your school projects, you know, you don't want to be that guy that doesn't do it. But again, for me, at least the way that I looked at that kind of stuff was everything was about execution. And, you know, when you think about that group project, right? It's like the one guy that didn't do anything, right? Or on a team, right? It's like the guy that's not picking up their slack. But there's another layer of teamwork that is the camaraderie aspect that for me, I really had no appreciation for because again like my success and everything in my life was measured upon results and ultimately as you start to move up in your career it becomes about getting results sure but are you running over people along the way and especially in this day and age where i think people are not as keen to you know push their feelings down you know and more people are more open with it and it's just more and more important to be sure that you are seen in the light of somebody that can work with a lot of different types of people one thing that i've kind of gone with is that you know there's no skill in managing or working with somebody who just works hard on their own right it's the true value and the true test of being a leader is can you motivate someone that's unmotivated? Can you help a low performer get up to a high performer, right? Like that's the challenge of a leader. And that's the true mark of somebody that's a leader. And again, like I said, my framework on being a team player was all about just results. And I'm just saying that it's, it's a little bit more than that when you get into this professional world. And hopefully that made sense to you guys, because for me, it, it 
took years for me to understand that. But yes, those are the eight things that I wish I knew before going into the construction industry. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about, please comment below. I'll do my best to reply to you. And again, too, for the next week, I'm going to be running this. So if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, use the link down below and schedule a time. I would love to hear your thoughts and meet you guys. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next video.